Welcome back, YouTube. I'm Phil, and I am with my co-host, Samantha. Hey, guys. Welcome back. And she's joining me today to check out Gordon Lightfoot. Are you aware of anything related to Gordon Lightfoot? I've heard his name definitely over the years. Like, I know that he's a musical artist, but I don't really know anything about his music. Yeah, that would put me in the same boat, pun intended, for this video. <laughs> and um, I've, I've heard, I had heard Gordon Lightfoot's name more recently, I think, when he passed away. Mm, and yes. I was like, who is this guy? Why is everybody making such a big deal about him? Because I wasn't aware of his catalog. Yeah. And, uh, but he's apparently been really, really popular for a long time and especially uh, well known in Canada. So um, I apparently should be aware of who he is and that's why we've arrived today partially but also because the commenters were saying we got to get to Gordon Lightfoot at some yes. point yeah you guys are giving all those recommendations yeah so I'm excited to check it out though because um somebody that like I said has gone down in Canadian history and has been so well known like Rush and some of the other Canadian artists that we have done has not disappointed us right yeah, like doing sure. Brian Adams you know all these artists that we had heard of but didn't know what their sound was like. And uh, so I'm excited to see what is gonna happen with the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, which centers around a ship that sink in, sank in Lake Superior. Yeah, so a little bit of history here too. Yeah, and with that, we can give you a little pop quiz question. Samantha's gonna provide that to you now. So what year did the ship sink is what we wanna know. So drop that in the comments below. Yeah, and um, I think we should find out a little bit more about this whole situation because that's all I know is that it was a ship that sank and uh, it was in Lake Superior. And so I think Gordon may be telling us about the wreck of the Edmund, Edmund Fitzgerald in this one. Are you ready? All right, let's get to the story. Let's go. The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they call Gitchagumi. The lake, it is said, never gives up her dead when the skies of November turn gloomy. With a load of iron ore, 26,000 tons more than the Edmund Fitzgerald weighed empty. That good ship and true was a bone to be chewed When the gales of November came early The ship was the pride of the American side Coming back from some mill in Wisconsin As the big freighters go, it was bigger than most With a crew and good captain well seasoned Concluding some terms with a couple of steel firms When they left fully loaded for Cleveland Then later that night when the ship's bell rang Could it be the north wind they'd been feeling? A tattletale sound And the wave broke over the railing And every man knew as the captain did too Twas the witch of November come stealing The dawn came late and the breakfast had to wait When the gales of November came slashing When afternoon came it was freezing rain in the face of a hurricane west wind When supper time came the old cook well, uh, Gordon showing off his storytelling story in this one. Yeah, I'm definitely very engaged. And, you know, he's going from point to point, telling the, to the story, like painting a full picture. Yeah, and his use of, of words, his language is really great. Um, you're very poetic. Yes, in it the is. In the way he's saying what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, keeping you engaged with the way he's saying the words, right? Like using um, the cadence and delivery of what he's saying when he's saying it is really emphasizing certain portions of each bar, which is yeah. really cool. I like how he gets, you know, in and out of each bar that he's saying as well, playing off the instrument, which comes in a little heavier hitting with the with the drums and um, use of like the electric guitar as well is really, really nicely done. Sounds really vibrant too. Like it sounds, you know, very full Um musically not just from the storytelling side of things because we've done some other storytelling on the channel where that's all you're focused on yeah but i feel like this has a good combination of you know the poetic lyricism with this vibrant instrumentation as well yeah. it's not just like we're listening for the story it's like a good song too right yeah i also like i don't know maybe it's just because i know you know going into this that it's about a boat and there's this boat visual but i almost feel like it's like a sailor like the True. sound of it is like a sailor yeah, song that's like a, good a way point. that like you know like you hear like songs that say sailors yeah. sing it sounds similar to like how those are delivered yeah to it's me. got a feeling of like what you would listen to out on the ocean exactly. or something like that well in i guess a lake in this instance yeah but, uh I, yeah i just want to pause it briefly just because you know clearly that's the focal point of this song is the storytelling aspect and he's mm -hmm. doing a fantastic job with the clarity and everything so it's cool i want to find out where we're going with it yeah and then what happens to the ship here <laughs> came on deck saying fellas it's too rough to feed you at 7 p.m a main hatchway caved in he said fellas it's been good to know you wired in he had water coming in and the good ship and crew was in peril and later that night when his lights went out of sight came the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald Does anyone know where the love of God goes When the waves turn the minutes to hours The searchers all say they'd have made Whitefish Bay If they'd put fifteen more miles behind her They might have split up or they might have capsized They may have broke deep and took water all that remains is the faces and the names of the wives and the sons and the daughters. I got some goosebumps there just for a second. The way he kind of closed out that last line. The only thing that yeah. remains is the uh, faces of the son. What do you say? The sons, the faces wives? and names of the wives, the sons and the daughters, the, the faces and, na and the names of the wives and the sons and the daughters. Yeah. And it's crazy. He just said all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he's getting so much in to everything that he's saying to paint that picture. Yeah. Right. Uh, description is great, but that's so sad. I mean, you know, that, um, it resulted that way. I wasn't, wasn't sure where we were going to go with it in terms of the ship sinking. Like I didn't know that people died on it. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, as we've gone through this now, he's been painting the picture from the ideas of the captain and, you know, from, uh, maybe a rescue team in this instant. And he's kind of, you know, allowing you to visualize it from each section of different parts that are all going on at the same time, yeah. which is obviously a talent on his part yeah. but um that's that's crazy i mean i've never heard about this before the the wreck of the edmund fitzgerald I no mean, me either another um, thing that i like is when he's delivering each piece of the story it's like he'll talk about one idea and then pause and mm -hmm. then move on to the next one and then pause so it's like you know he's not just like jumbling it all together where it's like overwhelming it's like he'll tell you about one thing that happens take a quick pause tell you about another thing that happens and takes a quick pause so it allows you to follow the story more easily as yeah. well there is one thing i'm not totally clear about he said in there that they were 15 minutes away and like i don't know if he was saying that like they were so close to the shoreline that you know if they just had to went a little bit you know 15 minutes longer that he they would have 15 miles did he say 15 miles yeah well, sorry, 15 miles, 15 minutes, probably not that, <laughs> that different. <laughs> yeah. We'll say in terms of the closeness to the shoreline mm -hmm. being that 
you know, they weren't that far away. And if they were able to go a little bit further, would have avoided this whole catastrophe, mm-hmm. um, you know, because that's pretty wild in itself, right? Yeah, that like the chances of that. You're so close and yet, you know, yeah. you want, you need help and nobody comes to help you. It's just wild to think. I mean, yeah. I'm not a big fan of water personally anyways. <laughs> I'm not a big boat guy as it is. But, um, you know, I, I would just... That'd be so terrible. I mean, to be stuck out in the ocean and, yeah. you know, you just need somebody to come help you and you'd be, you'd be fine, but you just can't get a hold of somebody or what? Like, I mean, uh, I assume they would add a radio or something, right? I, I don't really I don't know. I'm asking the, you and you're not an expert. So at this time period, like I have no idea. I would assume they would have had yeah, radio. I mean, they, yeah. They were, they had the ability to communicate long before the seventies. Right. So, yeah. um, anyways, you guys can let us know in those comments. Sorry for the long pause. I'm just, the th- all these thoughts are going through my head here. <laughs> All that remains is the faces and the names of the wives and the sons and the daughters. Lake Huron Rose Superior sings in the rooms of her ice water mansion. Old Michigan steams like a young man's dreams. The islands and bays are for sportsmen. With bars. And farther below Lake Ontario takes in what Lake Erie can send her. The iron boats go as the mariners all know with the gales of November remembered. The skies of beast. The old hall in Detroit they prayed in the Maritime Sailors Cathedral. The church bell chimed till it rang 29 times for each man on the Edmund Fitzgerald. The legend lives on from the Chippewa down of the big lake they call Gitchagumi. Superior, they said, never gives up her dead when the gales of November come early. Guitar work was so great in that, and um, you know, it's just a great song overall. I was saying midway, you probably didn't hear me, but he's just so great with the lyrics, mm-hmm. like just so well done. I'm just gonna go back to one area that I really, really loved um, that he put together was right uh, right here. Lake Huron rolls, Superior sings in the ruins of her ice water mansion. Old Michigan steams like a young man's dreams. The islands and bays are f- are for sportsmen. Like, and then he goes into Lake Ontario, and Lake yeah, Erie. Yeah, I was going to say too. Like he touches on all the Great Lakes. Yeah, so it's a scheme on the Great Lakes, mm-hmm. but then it's just so beautiful, like in the ruins of her ice water mansion. Like it's just that's so how you visualize that and come up with those lyrics is great. And we really, really appreciate that stuff from you know our hip hop being in our yeah, background, right? For sure. Um, and then obviously I was um, looking at the size of the ship in the background here because he said. Um, I guess it was later on. He said, I think 29 people. Yeah. So 29 people must have died because it says a church bell chime till it rang 29, 29 times. times for each man on the Edmund Fitzgerald. And again, just the way he put that together, he didn't say 29 people died, yeah. but he said so the, the church bell chime 29 there. times. Yeah. Right. And really so poetic in the way he said that. Yeah. And I was wondering how many people did pass away because it looked like a really big 
ship yeah. here. And it did say that it was a boat bigger than most of like a steamer. Right. In but. the beginning, I think he said yeah, that, somewhere right? Somewhere in the first half. Yeah. So um, just so entertaining, so engaging, um, beautifully written song. Really, mm-hmm. really love he how said, well. He like, said very poetic. Yeah. Um, it makes me want to listen to more from him for sure because from the storytelling aspect, that was awesome. But even beyond a story, I would just like to hear how he pens some more songs. Yeah. Um, because I bet you one of the reasons why he's so well renowned is his songwriting capability because this was you know like I said really really impressive for me yeah and for me the sound like I mean obviously it's the lyrics and the tone of the song is very poetic and almost solemn a little bit mm-hmm. like almost like to be remember like a memorial type thing yeah but the actual like um, instrumentation of the song like almost sounded kind of folky mm-hmm. to me which like I had thought like I could be totally off base I thought he was a country artist uh, uh, Gordon Lightfoot? Yeah. No, I don't think he's country. I, th- I don't. I, I wouldn't classify him as that. To me, it sounded kind of like f- like light rock folky. Yeah, I think kind that of. is probably more yeah, what his genre would cool. But we've only heard the, this song, yeah. so you know who knows. This might have been just particular. Let us know. Yeah, this might have been just been particular for what he wanted to get across for mm-hmm. this song. But you guys can let us know in those comments about yeah. Gordon Lightfoot because you are the experts, not us. Like yes. I said in the beginning, we're here to learn, and we've really enjoyed learning. But a big part of that has been from you guys in those comments. Yes. Obviously, we do. A little bit of research before we get into doing a song but the first time when we do an artist we don't want to know too too much about the song or the artist because we don't want to ruin the first time we get to listen to something so um, we're not going in completely blind but we do have limited capacity for what we're going in with and therefore we need to learn from you right yes. now and you guys can let us know about any other recommendations from Gordon Lightfoot I think there was like two or three really really popular songs that uh, were mentioned when we were looking into this before we started cool. and so if you want to recommend a couple in those comments we can maybe check out another yeah. one from him um as well sam has a an answer right about a pop yeah, quiz question so what year did the boat sink and it was 1975 yeah so i think he released this song in 1976 and the boat sank in 1975 so he got right on that like you said maybe making a little bit of a memorial to yeah. the people that passed Tribute. away yeah and um obviously i think this was close to home right because he i believe was born in aurelia and he's from canada and obviously the great lakes are around that area right so must have felt like it was something that he wanted to make a song about and um, that's why he came came out with it the year after so i um i really enjoyed it myself i think you enjoyed it too right and hopefully you guys enjoyed our video make sure you hit the like button for us and leave us a comment like i said but before you go you also want to make sure you hit that subscription and the notification bell because uh youtube tends to be a little problematic sometimes (laughs) so um we've also got playlists up so if you got a favorite artist that you want to check out and you find them on on our channel there's a good chance we got a playlist of them up and you can check out multiple video videos from them we got multiple videos every single day that's two exactly and uh we're gonna drop two more tomorrow so we'll see you then thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next one